This is example 4.6 on page 153 of your textbook. And here we're going to be utilizing the concept of limiting reactants and theoretical yield. So we're going to apply um, the concept of stoichiometry to do this. So in the problem, they give us a balanced equation for the production of ammonia, and they now give us two different starting amounts for each um, reactant. So starting with 86.3 grams of NO and 25.6 grams of H2, find the theoretical yield of ammonia in grams. So basically, we have two different starting material amounts, two different reactant amounts, and we have to figure out which one of these is what's called the limiting reactant. The limiting reactant is like the ingredient that runs out first. Once the limiting reactant runs out, we can no longer produce any more of our product. So that would be like if you were making cookies and you ran out of chocolate chips. You might have all of the other ingredients that you need, but if you don't have chocolate chips, then you can't make any more chocolate chip cookies. So in chemistry, the limiting reactant is the reactant that produces the least amount of product. Because once that reactant runs out, we can't produce any more product. So the strategy for this, for um, determining our limiting reactant and theoretical yield, is to calculate one of the product amounts that both the reactants can make and compare and see which reactant makes the least amount of product. The one that makes the least amount of product is going to be your limiting reactant. So in these types of problems, you're actually going to be doing kind of two different steps. You're going to have to calculate the amount of product that that particular amount of, in this case, NO is going to produce, and the amount of product that the particular amount of H2 can produce. And then you're going to compare the product amounts, whichever makes the least amount of product, that's your limiting reactant, and the number that you calculate is your theoretical yield. Basically, if this reaction went 100% correctly according to plan, that's how much product you should, should end up with. So we're going to start with our 86.3 grams of NO. And they want us to find the theoretical yield of ammonia. So I'm going to be converting grams of NO all the way to grams of ammonia. And then I'm going to do the same for H2. I'm going to go from grams of H2 all the way to grams of NH3. <coughs> and I'm going to be using the balanced equation and stoichiometry to do this. So up first is NO. We're going basically to see how much ammonia that can produce, and then we'll compare it to how much ammonia H2 can produce. So we'll start with our 86.3 grams of NO, and our goal for this is to find out how much ammonia this can make. So I'm going from grams of NO to grams of ammonia. So in order to do this, first, I'm going to get from um, my gram amounts to moles using molar mass. So I'm going to divide by the molar mass of NO, which is 30.01 grams of NO in one mole of NO. Now that I am in moles, I can look at the stoichiometry, my mole-to-mole -mole ratio in my balanced equation. So I'm now currently comparing moles of NO to moles of 
NH3 or ammonia. So in order to get from NO to NH3, I'm going to put NO, which is what I'm trying to cancel on the bottom, two moles of NO. That comes from the balanced equation. And on top, I'm going to put two moles NH3. So now grams cancel, moles cancel. I'm in moles of NH3. Ultimately, why I want to be in grams. So I'm going to multiply by its molar mass to get there. So one mole NH3, if I calculate the molar mass, is 17.03 grams. And that's going to cancel moles of NH3. So now if I multiply across, divide by the bottom, I get that you can produce 49 grams of NH3. So NO can produce that number, 49.0 grams of NH3. Now I'm going to do the same exact thing, but this time I'm going to start with H2 in that amount, and I'm going to see how much NH3 that can produce. So we're starting with 25.6 grams of H2. We're going to get it into moles by dividing by its molar mass. The molar mass is 202 grams of H2 in one mole H2. So cancel grams. Now I'm going to look at my balanced chemical equation and see that there are five moles of H2 for every two moles of NH3. So on the bottom, I'm going to put five moles of H2. On top, what I'm trying to get to, two moles NH3. So now my moles of H2 cancel. And now ultimately I want to be in grams of NH3 so I'm going to multiply by the molar mass. One mole NH3 that contains 17.03 grams of NH3. And if I multiply all these numbers, cross, divide on the bottom, I get 86.3 grams NH3. So that means H2 can produce that amount. So now if I'm comparing the two mass amounts, you determine what is limiting based on which one produces the least amount of product. So in this case, our least amount of product is produced by NO. H2 would be the reactant considered to be in excess, meaning that you're going to have extra left over um, because we're going to react all the NO before we can have the reaction go to completion with all the H2 that we have. So in our answer, the limiting reactant is going to be NO, and the Maximum amount of product, sometimes called the theoretical yield, is 49.0 grams of ammonia. So limiting reactant is nitric oxide. Theoretical yield is 49.0 grams of ammonia.